I don't want you to waste your money on the wrong 3D printer. Imagine this. You're walking through an electronics store. It's like the future's all around you, everywhere you look. It almost makes you feel like a crusading astronaut on an alien landscape or something like that. You come around the corner and suddenly, it's like a sliding matrix wall of 3D printing stuff. And then, panic. What do you buy? Which one's right for me? Will I have to mortgage my house? Okay, yeah, that's a little dramatic, I know, but I know how it feels. I held off getting into 3D printing for years because it just seemed so wild out there. It's so wild. But fortunately for you, I'm here to help. There's a lot of companies out there competing for your business, but you should really find what works best for you. And with that in mind, I have three questions I want you to ask yourself before you buy that first 3D printer. What, where, and how? Getting these three main questions out of the way will hopefully help you make the right decision on which printer you should get for you. Because getting that right printer for you will help you get the most satisfaction out of 3D printing. And ultimately, that's what we want. I mean, the Rolling Stones said it. Satisfaction. I demand satisfaction. And fun. And well, awesome prints. <laughs> but first, before you can make a really informed decision, you should know there are a couple of types of home 3D printing, resin and filament, and they're really different. Resin printing is usually referred to as SLA, which actually stands for stereolithography. And this type of printing is commonly used for printing very intricate and very clean models, like game figurines, sculptures, and things like that. SLA 3D printing builds up your printer from the bottom, only being a liquid prints it upside down. And however you do it, 3D printing can be pricey, but SLA tends to be a good bit more. A lot of requirements since the resin's kind of toxic, and there's a number of additional components need to make things work, like wash stations, curing stations, and even more. Now the other type of home 3D printing is called FDM, or filament printing, and that stands for Fused Deposit Modeling. It's good for just about any type of model, and you really only need the printer and the filament to get going. Speaking of filament, FDM printing uses a spool of plastic material called filament. This printing also builds up your print from the bottom, but this kind goes straight up one layer at a time. It's probably what you've already seen in time lapses online, where the model really looks like it's kind of growing straight up out of nothing. FDM printing uses a lot of different materials, though, and I just really recommend you get started with PLA. That's the most common type of 3D material and filaments, mainly due to a pretty easy experience printing and usually the lowest price. Works great with an open 3D printer, nothing else needed. It's not really intended for high heat locations like your car, but it really is a great place to get started. Now all of that means that FDM is the easiest and the cheapest way to get started 3D printing. And so with that in mind, we're going to stick to FDM, this type, for the remainder of this video. And now that we know what we're looking at material-wise, let's figure out what printer you should get. The first thing you need to know is, what do you want to do with your new 3D printer? Is this going to be a hobby where you just print out a few things occasionally, maybe a toy, a few doodads, but you know, nothing really serious? Or do you see this as something you could really use to be a benefit in your life? And that includes making fixes around the house for other people, gifts, donations, possibly even making things that you could sell. To go along with that question, what size models do you think you're going to want to print? A small build plate tends to cost less, but typically there's less that you can do with them without jumping through a lot of hoops. Now a bigger build plate tends to cost more, and it also takes up more room. Now the next question may seem a little weird, but it's just as important as the rest. Where will you put your 3D printer? I, I bet other people in your house want to know this question too. Where do I put my things? Oh. If you've seen some of the small prints people make online, or maybe things your friends make, you may think 3D printers are pretty small, but not really. Also, a 3D printer isn't really something you want to just move in and out of a closet, your garage, or your attic, especially if that printer requires manual bed leveling every time you move it. Now, I highly recommend making a plan for where your printer can live in your home. Don't think you'll stick it in the corner of the garage or the workshop, especially if you live in a cold or very humid environment like here in the south. Filaments are very hydroscopic, that means they absorb moisture through the air. 
Temperatures also are a factor as the starting temperature to print filaments around 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit and UV sunlight is recently being found more and more to ruin filament. And remember when we talked about satisfaction and having fun? Figuring out where to put your 3D printer before you buy it will go a long way toward achieving those goals. Oh, and before I forget, most 3D printers can be a bit smelly with the melting plastic and a little bit noisy, so don't plan to put it in your bedroom. Your significant other will thank you, trust me, even if that significant other is just your sleepy self. Okay, last but definitely not least, how much do you want to spend? You knew this was coming. Money's always a factor in everything we buy. And as with anything, the cheaper it is, you're usually going to have to put more time into maintaining and fixing it, not to mention the ease of use. And just like buying a new car, the more you're willing to spend, the more auto things you get. For 3D printers, that's things like auto bed leveling, auto vibration compensation, and a lot more. Now, there are a lot of choices for 3D printers. Having a price in mind will help you narrow down those choices enough to make a really informed decision. To give you an idea of what you're going to be looking at at the beginning of 2024, prices for most home 3D printers, FDM, range around 200 to over $2,000. The average though is probably four to $800. Now, I'm only talking about those printers I would recommend, especially not those cheap printers that are like $100 that you see online somewhere. Don't do it. A good rule of thumb is that just about anything you buy, the cheaper the cost, the cheaper the quality. That's not always true, I know, but you get the picture. You probably thought of other questions as we went through this video, but I really think these should be your first three questions. What, where, how? Or to help you remember more, what do you want to do with it? Where will you put it? And how much do you want to spend on it? Now to hopefully help you out even more, I wanted to give you uh, some thoughts from my personal experience. No ads or sponsors here, just what I think. You should still do your own research as the ultimate decision is going to be yours. As I mentioned before, the lowest price I would recommend is around $200 and the new Creality Ender 3 V3 is about as good as they come. I've used the older V2 and I'm extremely impressed with the add-ons to this new model. Auto bed leveling is a great bonus for it and the Ender 3 series has been around for years. It's widely considered to be one of the best 3D printers for newcomers. Well, for a little bit more, you can occasionally on sale, you can get the AnchorMake M5C. It tries to be the ultimate beginner printer by putting all the control in your phone app. It's fully automatic and fast. I personally prefer a, a screen on my printer, but it's a great printer to get started with and I've used it a lot. I really like it. Continuing the price increases as well as the size, there's the Creality K1 series and the Bamboo P1 series. Series. Now that Creality has worked out a lot of the kinks, for me, the K1 has really become a great enclosed workhorse. The Bamboo P1s, though, they've sort of taken over this price range, mainly because they have the ability to upgrade later to printing with multiple colors. But I have to say, my favorite 3D printer at this moment, and it's going to sound crazy, it has to be the open-air, bed-slinging, fast $300 Bamboo A1 Mini has a really small footprint on your desk if you just buy the printer by itself. And the only real drawback is the small build area that limits your ability to make bigger prints. For a beginner though, the reliability, the speed, the small size, all of that makes it just an absolutely incredible machine. And just like Bamboo's other 3D printers, you can always upgrade later to multiple colors. And the new big brother to the Mini, the Bamboo A1, has the same reliability while adding a bigger build area and footprint for a modest price increase. And I've used it a good bit, have to say, it's a really great machine. Now again, this video has no sponsors, just my personal opinions based on my experiences. Well, hopefully I've helped you down the road to getting that first 3D printer. Figuring out what works best for you before you make that purchase will go a long way toward making the experience fun and educational. Now, when you do get your first printer, let us know. Please help us out by clicking like and subscribe. Check out our channel for more information on setting up and using that new printer so that you too can learn, create, and amaze.